we might never use the word perfect to describe what we are aiming for, but so many of us, myself included, so many of us are taught in the ways of perfectionism, in the ways of denigrating ourselves for our mistakes, of thinking that all of those things that go wrong define who we are. And I put wrong in big air quotes in case you're just listening along. We are taught that the things that go wrong somehow make us less than instead of more. Instead of more able to feel compassion, more able to be in relationship, more able to be real with one another. So often our perfectionism, even if we don't use that word, it gets in the way. It gets in our way as human beings in communities, as a society. It gets in our way of forming real relationships with one another. When we are trying so hard to do things right, that we are ashamed of the things we get wrong, perfectionism is in our way. It gets in the way of our being authentic with one another because none of us is perfect. We are all going to make mistakes. That is just part of being human. And when we pretend that it is even remotely possible that we do something perfectly, perfectionism is in our way. It gets in the way of creating justice in the world, too, because the struggle for justice requires us to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes, to move on from those mistakes. Making justice in the world means that we need to take risks, risks that sometimes fail. And every time we hold ourselves back from doing something because we're afraid we're going to get it wrong, perfectionism is in our way. That concept of perfect is a myth. It is a dangerous myth. It is a dangerous myth that any of us can ever be perfect at anything. That anything that a group of human beings does together can actually be perfect. And so if we understand that concept of perfect to be a myth and a dangerous one at that, what is it we gain from that understanding? Well, first and foremost, we gain a willingness to try. We gain a willingness to try our best to do something, understanding that we're not going to be perfect at it. We're not going to get everything right, especially the first time we try it. The things will go wrong. People will not be muted, or sometimes they will be muted when they're supposed to be talking. We will play a video at the wrong time, or we will accidentally start it over that we, despite our best efforts, will sometimes have technical difficulties that prevent our entire prelude from making it into worship. You've seen it all. You know. If we understand perfect to be a myth, we gain an ability to apologize to each other when things go wrong, because things are going to go wrong. We have to cultivate in ourselves the ability to say, oops, I'm sorry, and to do it better the next time, to learn from those things. When we understand that perfect is a dangerous myth, we gain the ability to really learn and grow with each other, to really stretch ourselves, to try on new things, new ways of being that sometimes will fit us better than the old ways of being. Long ago, when I was first starting my first pass through graduate school, when I was a cell biologist, that field that was very much not perfect for me, a friend said to me, as people were stressing out over getting assignments done, stressing out over writing papers, drafts, and editing, and revising, and editing again, and revising, stressing out over grades, and all sorts of things, a friend said to me, you know, Michael, there are two kinds of papers, done and undone. She looked at me and she said, don't be undone. And I've taken that into my heart. Over the years, there are two kinds of papers, done and undone, and we do the best we can. I do the best I can. We take in the knowledge, we synthesize it, and we let it out. And then we have another chance to learn again especially at the things that we got wrong the first time. 
I've learned that there are also two kinds of worship services, done and undone. There are two kinds of sermons, done and undone. And I can sit and edit and re-edit and worry about the exact words that I'm gonna say again and again and again, or I can be real and sometimes trip over my words and make mistakes and have things happen or even come out of my mouth the wrong way. And maybe have those things be beautiful together. Maybe have those things be better than the script would have been. When we understand that perfect is a myth, we gain an opportunity to grow together. I've thought a lot about this over the years as I craft worship. I laugh at Elia Kemmler's description of the church where everything goes wrong because so many of those things have happened to me over the years. There was a time which will never happen at CLF when the chairs in the sanctuary had to be set up exactly the way I needed them set up for me to feel like worship was happening. And so I would come in early and rearrange all the chairs in the sanctuary every Sunday because they were never, they were never perfect when I got there. Even when my body did not possess the spoons necessary to do that, I did it anyway. And it hurt, it physically hurt, but I did it. And over time, I realized just what that was doing to my psyche, to my preparation for worship, I was not spiritually grounded in that moment, to my health, to my body. The chairs will never be perfect. The chairs will never be perfect. So they might as well be good enough. Since the pandemic started and so many congregations have worshiped online, so many of my colleagues, and maybe you are among them, have stressed endlessly about the performance that happens in this box, about the recording of videos, the precise performance of music, the sound editing, the knitting together of everything. I witness that stress. I witnessed that stress today. And I understand it sometimes that it is perfectionism getting in our way of being as good as we can be. But in the ragged imperfection that we embrace, in the mess that is outside of this camera that you cannot see and I will not let you see, there is something beautiful as well in the conversation, in the sharing with one another, in the mistakes, there is something beautiful. There's an invitation to real humanity with one another. And so we're going to do the best we can. We're going to be in beta, as CLF likes to say, with all of the bugs and glitches and glimpses of beautiful, imperfect humanity that that phrase implies. We are going to learn together. We are going to grow together. We're going to make mistakes. And we will seek to repair any relationships hurt by those mistakes. We will take risks for love. We will take risks for justice. And we will apologize and seek reconciliation when those risks go awry. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing to be in a learning, growing community. It is a beautiful, real, authentic thing to get rid of that myth of perfect. So today, as we ponder this, I want us to think about where in all of our lives we need to get rid of that attachment to perfect, where we need to get rid of that myth, that dangerous myth, where that dangerous myth is holding us back. Where is it in your life? Maybe in your work, maybe in your relationships, maybe in some other part of your life. Where is it that you are holding on to an attachment to perfect? when good enough is good enough? Where is it that you are being undone by the myth of perfectionism? Where do you need to be good enough so that you can fully be you with all of the beauty that comes with your imperfection? 
Today, I want us all to commit to letting go of perfect, to breathing it out, to understanding its danger, to understanding how it is holding us back, and instead to work together on being real. Let us be authentic human beings together, beloved. It is so much more beautiful that way.